Hey everybody, it is Monday. It's a date and we're here somewhere uh, with some things that probably are kittens. Uh, yeah, so this is Tom Foolery, the latest addition to the Kitten Academy. He is, as you can see, um, sort of like a Duluth Tuxi uh, and he is, uh, I don't know, month and a half, two months, maybe, maybe even a little more than two months old. Uh, we don't know his age exactly. He's just come to us a little late. Um, but uh, obviously you can see he gets around, he eats, everything's good. So uh, if you haven't met him before and you're wondering why there is a kitten out here with the faculty, uh, Tom, like I said, he came to us late. Our hopes is still that we can get him to be sort of integrated with one of the existing classes. And our hope is still that we can get those two existing classes to be integrated with each other. But we're taking it all very cautiously and slowly. So Tommy so far is uh, out on his own playing with the faculty and uh, doing whatever he wants around the house with DJ. Uh, and right now we're wrestling a feather duster because that's a fun time. He's got a lot of energy and he just wants to play and fight and bite everything, uh, which is pretty typical for a kitten, I think. Uh, I think last time we talked, I was talking about how he seems like he hasn't learned all the lessons about how cats. Um, that, you know, some kittens have learned, but I don't think that's accurate because I'm now interacting with the faculty and in fact, he's met some of Rue's kids and in fact, he's met some of... All right, moment of truth. I don't know if that got us anywhere. We'll find out. Uh, I'm just gonna pretend like we're still going strong though. So uh, again, here we are with Tommy. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to think uh, what else I need to say about him, but I, I basically got nothing. Uh, so as I was saying earlier, uh, little Tommy, we're gonna try to get him uh, hooked up with um, either Rue or Mural's kids and hopefully get Rue and Mural's kids hooked up together, but we're taking it slow. So for now, Tommy's gonna be running around quite a bit and you are, uh, you're not gonna see too much of him outside of these close-ups until we get done with it. Of course, if you watch uh, the regular Kitten Academy live stream like a hawk, and uh, we do have a lot of viewers that are hawks, by the way. So if you watch it the way they do, uh, you will uh, you'll see him once in a while as we try to introduce him to everybody. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's the plan anyway, taking it nice and slow. Um, I also was saying before the break <laughs> that, uh, that he, uh, last time we talked about him, he, he was, uh, I was saying I wasn't sure about how he'd get along with other cats. No, the short story is that he gets along with other cats a lot better than I thought, actually. He's a little hyper. He's got a little bit of that crazy energy. But uh, if another cat tells him to calm down and back off, he will definitely back off and, uh, and respect that. And that's really all you can possibly ask of a cat. So he wants to play with everybody. They don't want to always play with him. And uh, when they tell him to stop, he, he stops. And that's about all you get. Uh, it's, you know, it's about all you need, I guess I should say. So a uh, very good kid that way. Of course, I think whoever does adopt him in the end, it's gonna be real important to, especially if you have other cats, um, it's gonna be important to help him work off some of his energy on a regular basis so that he's not just crazy uh, and that will help a lot too. So that's all, uh, that's all, I guess, part of our plan and hopefully part of his adopter's plan because that's something that's likely to continue for a while. I was just having a discussion with my mom about it actually because she's got a couple of cats that have some crazy energy too that are kittens. And we were sort of talking about how long is it until they start to calm down? And uh, I don't know if there's, you know, like a single number you can give that says, oh, all cats calm down enough to deal with after this point. There's definitely not. But uh, we were looking at the fact that Custard seems like he's finally starting to enter his calm phase and he's about four years old, uh, give or take. So, you know, I'd say if you're gonna adopt a crazy kitten, you definitely have to plan on having at least a, a couple few years uh, of, of having plans to mitigate some of that craziness before they start to settle down a bit. Uh, and that's important to, to consider. Uh, one of the plans, of course, that's really good for that is to, to uh, you know, give them toys and play, play with them every day and wear them out like we're doing right now. And another plan is to work on training them. Uh, you know, even if they, 
even if you never train them uh, to do anything successfully, that time that you spend together working on it uh, definitely can help uh, them be more social and to act in, you know, more appropriate ways and uh, also, you know, eat up some of that energy of theirs. So uh, it's, it's really a good practice. And that's why I'm planning on starting. Uh, I've been wanting to do some clicker training with our cats for a long time. I haven't done it in forever. Last time I clicker trained a cat, I think was Acro. So uh, I'd like to get into it, um, you know, in a bit more focused way with Tommy and some of the faculty. And I will let you know how it's going. I haven't started yet, but that's on the, the list of things to start really soon now. Um, so that should be exciting too. Anyway, that's enough talking about little Tommy here. Um, we need to go see some other kittens. So I'm gonna put this thing up. Tommy's gonna take care of himself and play with the faculty and these toys for a while. Look at him being so wild. He's a fun one. You're a fun one, buddy. Oh, okay, here, let me throw that for you. There you go, got him. So the thing that we noticed, uh, hi Maggie, the thing that we noticed as we're bringing Tommy together with Rue's kids and Mural's kids, the first thing that you would notice if you were watching that is Tommy's definitely more advanced than they are uh, in the, the sense that he's way better at tracking objects and uh, you know, like he can follow things around the room and he knows what's going on. Where if you say compare him to these kids in here, even though they're moving around just fine and they're eating just fine and they're being kittens just fine here in Mural's room, uh, they are just not able to like track objects yet. And in fact, when they were seeing Tommy yesterday, hang on, I gotta, I gotta do this hand sanitizer thing. I put it in my hand and now I'm just hang on, hang on. Okay. All right. So. Uh, the thing I was saying is that they are just now getting to the point where they are able to uh, sort of see things and move around, and they're not very good at tracking yet. So when, uh, when little Tommy was interacting with them, he would sort of start to swipe at them and hit them, and they wouldn't even know what was happening. Like, they, wouldn't, they would hardly recognize there was another cat involved, much less, you know, that he was trying to play with them. There's just no idea whatsoever. So obviously we can't just bring them together at this point, but in a few weeks, they'll be a little more even. Uh, Rue's kids probably would be a little different, but they didn't interact with them quite as much. They just didn't have the opportunity yet. So uh, they've met a bit and he was basically taking a nap at the time. We'll bring them back together again though. They'll get more chances to interact. Uh, as far as progress goes with the kittens, these are Mural's kids. As you know, they are three weeks old now, just a little over three weeks actually. And they have all started to eat the regular kitten food a little bit. They're not eating it, you know, as their every meal every day yet, uh, but they're definitely all eating a little, and that's so nice to see. It's uh, it's not just nice that they're eating; it's it's nice that you know they're giving their mom a little bit of a break that way too. So that's real good. Here's somebody left the sound on the TV in the other room. It's driving me crazy. I I really have to mute it if we're going to keep talking in here. So give me one second to take care of that. I know, that's, I know, I know, it's crazy. It's a whole new kind of distraction here. Let me see if I can give you a doodle to look at while I go and doodle uh, that. Hang on, I'm trying so hard to balance that phone. That's as good as we get. Hang on. Should make everything just a little easier for me to cope with sound wise at least i hope uh here we go again so uh murals kids they uh still haven't really moved out of the box either uh, i'm surprised by that i would have thought that now that they have the ability they would have all just kind of gone out in the room and left the box forever but not the case they like the box and that's okay there we go you can see we got the light fixed in there you can also see the blankets are a little dirty. We've got a blanket change lined up. We're gonna do it right after this. I uh, probably should have done it before so the close-up didn't look so bad, but you know, bygones. Hi, buddy. So, let's 
Uh, let's start by, let's weigh the kids and see all of them real quick as we're weighing them. That way we know we got a chance to see everybody. Oh, look, they're playing. That's good too. They're all getting to be pretty mature little kittens. So uh, let's let's just we'll go through these pretty quickly. Actually, uh, this is Splotch, I believe. You guys are gonna have to tell me if I get any of the names wrong because I'm not using the cheat sheet. We're just gonna go for it. Fourteen point five for Mr. S Miss Splotch. Ms. There we go. Oh, very loud. Okie dokie. You sit right here. Then we'll go, uh, I think, to Trace next. So this is little Trace. Hi, Trace, Trace. Okay, there we go. 14.8 uh, for Trace. There we go. Hi, little Tracy. Then we're going to have Etch next. Etch, etch locked in a, a battle. Look at this. Oh, man, look at that serious face and his paw up like a warning. And he's got his ears pointed forward like a big cat. Look at that. That is some big cat signaling right there. <laughs> He's trying so hard to tell a uh, uh, little squiggle there. Back off, pal. All right, okay. All right, Edge, come on. Come on, buddy. All right, you may have lost the battle, but you still could win the war. Sit right there. 14 and a half. Well, 14, four. Go fight whomever you like. The other boy here is Doodle. Oh, looking very pretty boy. Okay. Doodle weighs 13.5. All right, everybody seems a little light today. Of course, that does happen during the weaning process, which like I said, we've, we've really entered into here. These kids are all eating. Uh, so if, if the weights are a little lower than we expect today, I'm not gonna panic too much. Speaking of eating little Squiggle here was the biggest eater of all. Squiggle chows down. I mean, really digs in. Not just to this food, but when I was feeding them baby food, uh, Squiggle was aiming to take my entire finger. Yeah. So a real good eater. Oh, and I guess it shows one pound today, 16 ounces on Squiggle. Yes, well, that did make a difference then, didn't it? Yeah. Big difference, all that eating. You show your brothers and sisters how to do that, okay? Oh, oh, now we really lost the video. It's lost on my end, that's a new one. Uh, hang on a sec here. Come on now, what is going on? Wow, really today. There we go, now I got it back. Good. All right. Seriously. Uh, tech stuff. Oof, my goodness. All right. So that's little squiggle. Like I said, eating a ton, 16 ounces. Very good. And that brings us to, oh, the last kitten, uh, our little, um, uh, sp uh, scroll, scrawl. Yes. Scrawl. Little scrawl. This is tiny scrawl. Scrawl's always been the smallest one of scrawl. Hi. Look at those big baby eyes too. Scrawl's got big baby eyes. I know. Okay, sit right there, little baby face. 12.1 ounces. Yes, three quarters of a squiggle. Three quarters of a squiggle, buddy. You gotta really work on that eating, okay? You got a lot of catching up to do. A lot of catching up to do. So that is, that. Uh, those are uh, Mural's six kittens. <sighs> You keep like sort of scratching your eye and jumping around in a funny way. Yeah, and you got some eye goobers going on. I see that, I see that. Let me take a look at your eye. Did you get something in it? Let me help, let me help just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit of wipe. This is uh, Trace, by the way, little Trace. You can tell from her spot on her head mostly. Okay. Good, feeling a little better about it now? Yeah, we hope. And we'll replace these blankets and uh, check on all the kittens again and make sure everything's good. But I wanted to make sure you guys all got a chance to see them this morning on the close-up, uh, which I know. So that is Scrawl, the tiniest one, and Doodle there, the, the black one. And then we have Trace over there by the litter box, and we've got Etch here, the orange one. 
And we have Splotch, who's, I don't know, digging around my leg here. Here, kids, have some food. Think about that. And then we have uh, Trace right here, still in my lap. So there we go. All right, we, oh, look how cute he is. Look at that face on that doodle bug. And look at those thumbs on that doodle bug too. I know, buddy. What are you doing? So this is what I mean by like, they're not good at tracking objects. And then even if they can see something, they, they're not good at sort of heading towards it or hitting it or coordination or everything. They're working out everything. So you put them together with a cat, you know, who's fully online, uh, like little Tommy is, they just, they don't have any idea what's happening. He tries to play with them. They don't even, they don't even understand there's a cat there really, much less what to do about it. <sighs> Isn't that right, buddy? Look at the doodle bug. They're figuring things out real fast, though. It won't be long until they've got it. And, uh, and they'll be completely ready to play with Tommy. Well, let's leave these kids here to run around. Well, this is actually probably the most running around I've seen them do. I haven't really seen them, like, playing or racing around outside of the box. But in the last mm -hmm, 24 hours, you know, they've definitely been starting to come out a little bit more. So that's a good sign, too. <laughs> okay. All right, let's leave you guys here. Let's go over next door and see those kids real quick, all right? There we go. I thought we would see their mom sitting right here outside the door like she so often does, but no, she's gone somewhere around the house. And I don't even know where. She could be anywhere right now. She's probably down in the living room near Tommy, though. So here we are with Ru, Rutabaga. There she is right there, little Miss Rutabaga and her kittens. They've been moving closer to the door. That's gonna be a problem. Gotta be real careful when I open and close it. And you kids have made a huge mess of your food because you spent half your time eating it and the other half throwing it around and trying to bury it. We got all that everywhere. Um, I, so these kids are now just over five weeks old, and you can see the big difference, right? Uh, two weeks doesn't sound like a lot of time, but these kids two weeks older, they do fine. Um, they're, they're getting very good at tracking objects. They're not 100% on it. Like if you throw something, they might not quite follow that. But if you're like swinging a noodle stick or something like that around, they are fine with tracking any of that. Fingers, uh, each other, they do little chases up with Tommy and last night I took uh, two of the tabbies I took um, this is um, uh, brain activate um, hijinks oh <laughs> sorry buddy did I spook you this is hijinks so we took hijinks and we took the bigger one hustle and I brought them to meet Tommy but like I said Tommy wasn't really interacting at that point he's kind of mostly taking a nap and they they hardly saw him at all so it didn't really count but I do think that they will, uh, they'll probably be able to deal with him, especially if he stays as respectful of boundaries as he has been. Then we shouldn't have trouble. Of course, getting him introduced to Rue is going to be a little trickier because she will lay down the law. And I think if he does his thing where he sort of pounces on her unexpectedly, he could end up getting a little bit more of a response than what he's used to. <laughs> So we're gonna just have to take it all real slow, I guess is my point. But let's talk about uh, let's talk about Rue and her kids and how well they're doing. Um, you can see Rue is feeling pretty good about herself. She's wanted to go out more and more often, and we've been slowly getting her and Mural to take treat time together, and it's going actually very very well. They'll they'll basically touch noses and take treats together and lick the same treat, and they're fine uh, being that much of friends. But uh, Rue still wants to set some strict boundaries and Mural still has no respect for that. So for instance, Mural will come right in here and start eating all the dry food if she can. And sometimes Rue will allow that. And other times Rue is like, you do not go in there with my kittens uh, and will want to smack uh, Mural and hiss at her and tell her to go away. So a little bit of a mixed bag so far on actually getting them together, but having controlled introductions is going extremely well. And uh, they're both being, you know, uh, sort of, uh, they get along, I guess is my point. As long as you're sort of giving them treats and keeping them distracted, controlling the situation, it's fine. 
And it's just when you, uh, you just sort of let them do their own thing that they start to realize there's another cat here and, uh, you know, then, then it gets awkward. But, uh, but overall, quite, quite good. That's a poop announcement that you hear. Bruce has gone to go see why, why the kitten has to talk about pooping. But that's what's happening. Just having a little bit of a litter box chat. We should weigh these kids too, just so that we can see all their faces and I'll go through the names one more time. And then we'll have that for done for today as well. And um, it's possible that we'll get these kids moved downstairs before the next close up on Wednesday, possible. It's the room's basically ready for them. I do have to do, you know, like the cameras and sort of set up some extra toys and things, but it's all clean. Just a matter of filling it up with the uh, stuff and kittens. So that could happen anytime. These guys have been really good about the litter box too. We've got some bad poops here and there that, uh, you know, kind of uh, make that a little questionable, but in general, they've been so good. I'm not, I'm not very worried about bringing them downstairs sooner rather than later. And I think it would benefit them. And I think it might benefit their mom too. You know, I was talking before about how when she was at Dr. Katz for a couple weeks, um, there were other cats in her space Constantly, all the time. You know, cats she knew, cats she didn't know, ones coming in for the clinic, the ones that live at the clinic, like all kinds of cats. And she was okay with it. She had to be. She didn't get much of a choice. Um, so uh, my thinking, though, is if we put her in the room with windows, is she's just going to get more and more exposure to the flat faculty running around outside of you know the main room with all those glass doors. And fingers crossed. Uh, that will result in her being more okay with all of them and not just constantly stressed. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. That's all stuff we're going to sort of determine as we do it. So this guy who was just making the big litter box announcement and now is taking care of his business and come over here for some awkward pets. What are you doing? What is he doing with this? <laughs> He's just going to lean way back into my hand. Okay, buddy. Okay, if that's how you like it. This is Caper, by the way. So uh, Caper is the one uh, that is identifiable. Uh, first off, he's 19 ounces today. It seems like a good way. He's the one that's the classic tabby with the big stripes. And also he's got a little bit of a kink in his tail. I think we've all noticed that, like a check mark. So you'll see it takes like a 90 degree turn. Uh, so those are his sort of identifying features. He's got beautiful eyes and a lovely face. Mm, tiny caper beans. So that's caper. Oh, his fur is so soft right now. These kids are just super friendly and fun and wonderful. They've gotten to that age where uh, you're starting to get a real feel for them <laughs> and where they can be super interactive. He's being so polite. You saw him kind of biting at me, but he just, he barely even touched me with his teeth. And uh, mostly that was licking. So sweet. Yeah, you got some more licks hidden in there? Okay, a couple more licks, maybe. Mm -hmm. Lick, lick. Lick, lick. And if that was Tommy, I think I probably would have just lost a finger. That's not true either, actually. Tommy does pull his bites. You know, he'll, he'll bite a little bit more than I think he ought to. But he's not biting to hurt. He's just, he's just got a much stronger play chomp than uh, I think he should. So... Uh, okay, uh, so that is caper, and that means next we're going to want to measure hijinks, and it's cool. I can tell hijinks from um, Hustle at a glance now, and I think you will be able to as well. Uh, here's how you can do that. Um, hijinks, who is now on the scale, there we go, weighs 21.3. Wow, that is a big cat. So that's hijinks. Wait, let me just put Hustle on there with you for a second. Let's see if we can see the both of you together. It'd be easier that way, okay? This is Hustle. There we go. Oh, sit right there. Hustle weighs 21.5-ish. And mm, maybe you can tell. You can see how much bigger he looks, but it's not really 
as much as physical size as the fact that Hustle seems, anyway, to be a long-haired uh, floofy kitten. I'm trying to get you an angle where you can really see. Look how much of that fur sticks up. Look at all that. You see all that? I think that's all because he's a long... I think that's a good way to tell him apart from hijinks. Also, uh, I saw several people ask in the chat about the kitten that, that had the little legs that would splay out and weren't really supporting his weight. That's Hustle that has the splayed legs, but, uh, and he still, he'll still do it a little bit, but you can see he's basically developed past it now. Look at him. Uh, is he going to run anywhere for us, though, so we can really see it? There you go. So you might still notice that his legs do have a tendency to sort of splay out because that's the way uh, he's used to being and he hasn't gotten over it 100%. These things take time. But uh, he is clearly getting his legs under him to run and walk and all that stuff, just as he ought to. Even on the hardwood floors, he still is getting around fine and much less just sliding around like he was doing. Let's see if we can get an example of that too. See, there we go. <laughs> Hi, bud. I was trying to illustrate something. You're not helping, but okay. That's fine. Uh, also, we weighed the three tabbies, so now we've got to go on and weigh the three little black kittens. So let's see if we can do that in some kind of an order. I think the first one that we need to see is uh, Gimmick. Oh, and this is him right here. So this is, oh, Gimmick. Hang on. we got to reset this scale first. Okay, there we go. Gimmick right there. 20.1, there you go. So that's Gimmick, uh, and I know the three black kittens are very difficult to tell apart from each other. We will be able to get them collars soon, very soon now, I think. They're just about ready for it. But in the meantime, the way I tell Gimmick apart is by his little white spots. He's got one right there that's a little hard to tell, and then he's got one on his neck that is very obvious, except that he's always hiding it, because he's got to really look up to show it to you. But that's little Gimmick, and that's how you tell. Then next, we've got this toe biter here. Hi, you're biting my toe. You're biting it. I need that toe for later, though. Okay, so leave some for me. Um, that is our girl kitten. The only girl in this class is Sham. She's also all black. She does not have those white spots that her brother has. She does have a piece of fur in her eye, though. Can I help you get that, Shammy? Did we get it? I think we got it. All right. Oh, not quite. She's still going for it. Hang on. 20, even I think 20. Uh, let me take a look at her eye. I'm gonna set the phone down for one second. I just saw a big old piece of fur stuck in it. Oh, it looks like we got it together. Okay, it's gone. It's gone, we're good. So this is our the one girl in the class, little Sham, little Shammy. Hi, Sham. Okay. And that leaves us with one kitten remaining. This one here eating the tripod is uh, Gambit. Gambit. Gambit, who you can tell, uh, you may not be able to see this too well, but still has a lot more gray in his fur, especially his back half, than the other black kittens do. Although I do think, well, it's hard for me to say if it's fading or not, but I do think it might be fading a little bit. It's certainly hard to see on the camera. Uh, still, that is a gimmick. I'm sorry, Gambit, 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 and he weighs tw 20 or 20.1. Let's put you back on for a second opinion real quick, buddy. Hang on, hang on, second opinion time. All right, we're going to say 20.1. Now you can come up here. Hi, Gamby. Now these kittens are all crazy, friendly lap kittens that come running when I come in the door. All of them do. But, you know, there's degrees, uh, and I think you could place them on a spectrum of uh, people-seeking behavior. And I think if you did, um, Little Gambit here would come out as the top spot in the class. But any of the kittens in this class uh, seem to be real people-seekers with, uh, I would say, uh, you go to one extreme here with Gambit all the way at the top end, and then on the bottom, I would probably say the least people-seeking is either going to be uh, Hustle, who more often than not seems like he just can't be bothered, or um, little Sham here. I think this is Sham. Yes, Sham, our girl. Hi, Sham, who just always seems like she's got more important things to do. Uh, and even that, I mean, she still will come up and snuggle in my lap as soon as she's got a chance. So they're all just really great that way. And I expect uh, that uh, Muriel's kids are going to end up in the same situation once they get old enough to really be able to do what they want, 
course, that's a real prerequisite to seeking people's uh, attention is actually being able to identify and move towards a person. It's, it's a lot of skill to learn. <laughs> so, all right, so those are our kids. And uh, just a quick recap of, uh, I don't know, anything I said that might have been potentially important. Um, first off, we have a Princess Paisley design on our store. I didn't say that yet, and I haven't published it outside of Discord yet, but it's a really cute design uh, of Princess Paisley. So if she was a favorite of yours, it's not too late to get a t-shirt or a mug with her on it, and I'll publish that to Twitter soon, and it will go in our next blog post whenever that comes. Uh, secondly, uh, Tommy turns out to be much better with other cats than we thought he was going to be, but we're still taking introductions very slowly. So it could be a little while before you see him with the other classes on a regular basis, but if you watch the Kitten Academy live stream closely, you will see him meet the other classes at some point uh, again, if you didn't already. Uh, we're continuing introductions between Rue and Mural, and those are also going quite well, uh, but also slowly and cautiously. So if you watch again, uh, you'll see some of that happen on the regular Kitten Academy live stream um, here and there. And I think that's it for news, really. I think we're all set. Uh, let's see. I would add I have all of the surgeries and appointments scheduled for both of these classes all the way through graduation, but I don't have those dates in front of me. I can just tell you that they will all be ready to be picked up by their adopters before Christmas, some of them uh, the first week in December and some of them a little closer to the second week in December. Um but that's still quite a ways off. And I saw some people asking about the adoptions. Uh, we'll open the adoption application online on our website in due time. Uh, and until then, just a quick reminder that uh, the Danbury Animal Welfare Society does not want applications to come directly through their website. They would definitely prefer for you to use our application and just sort of wait for it to be open. Uh, so please do that if you are looking to adopt one of these kittens and you want to apply uh, just be patient a little bit. We'll get that application open at the right time after we've had a chance to sort of get to know each of them a little, little bit better. So, all right, that's that. If you want to keep watching these kittens, if you want to keep watching those kittens, if you want to sometimes see Tom uh, and uh, sometimes the faculty and sometimes who knows what, uh, some guy in the kitchen, uh, I don't know, people mopping, uh, some of the other things that you sometimes see on the Kitten Academy live stream, feel free. To do that, to watch the Kitten Academy live stream any day, all day, uh, whatever you like. And if that's not your thing, we will see you for another close-up on Wednesday when we will once again get up close and personal with each of these kittens. We might be getting to the point where maybe instead of weighing them, uh, we'll just be able to get out a toy and play with them for the whole close-up. That would be fun too. I think we're getting real close to that. And who knows, um, could be, could be, no promises that by Wednesday... Uh, these guys will be taking their next close-up from the big room downstairs. Entirely possible. Thanks again, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have an excellent, excellent week. Uh, really make the most of it. And we will see you again uh, Wednesday. Ish.
Uh, see what she weighs. Uh, it might be tricky. I don't know. She looks pretty settled in. Let's still turn it on, see if she gets up. Six point three nine pounds for mom. All right, see you later, everybody.